It's 2021, which can only mean one thing. It's time to set some reading goals. Hi, hello, my name is Ash. If you're new here, hello. If you're returning, welcome back. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you can be alerted to all my bookish and non-bookish and ranty content. So 2021 has started, and for me, it's really important at the beginning of the year not to necessarily set resolutions, but to set goals for myself. So this year, I decided to set reading goals for myself as a reader, and also writing goals for myself as a writer, and I thought it would be cool to share my goals with all of you. So let's jump into it. I'm going to do my reading goals first. So one of my first goals is to read more adult contemporary books. Uh, if you've been around on my channel, you know that I read a lot of sci-fi and a lot of fantasy, and in that, the demographic I kind of stay in is young adult. So I would like to branch out more and read some more adult contemporary books. And I'm going to start that off um, with reading some of Tal Talia Hibbert's books. Uh, I heard a lot of people rave about these books, so I'm really excited to jump into them. I have, take a hint, Danny Brown up here. So that's probably going to be my first adult contemporary read of the year. But yeah, that's my first goal is to read more adult contemporary books and just try to expand the the base of what I read a little bit more. So that's goal number one. Goal number two is another expand what you read goal. It's read more nonfiction books. I read a lot of uh, journal articles and news articles and research articles, but I don't read a lot of nonfiction books. So one of my goals for 2021 is to really sit down and read more nonfiction and autobiographical books. So that's something that I'm really looking to do in 2021. Goal number three. My third goal for 2021 as far as reading goals is to read at least three to four books per month. I think it's a good mid-range goal for me. I I don't tend to get down myself when I only read one book, but one book a month, one to two books a month isn't usually enough to kind of, you know, satisfy my reading hunger. Uh, but three to four feels like a good mid-range goal just because I like to spend time with my books and I feel like a week, per, a week per book is a good amount of time to spend on a book to really kind of sit down and get into the world and process what I'm reading. Uh, so I figured three to four books a month would be good because it gives me about a week to a week and a half per book, depending on what book I'm reading and depending on how many days are in each month and you know, what's particularly going on in that month. So goal number three is to read at least three to four books per month. I'm not someone who, you know, likes to read six, seven, eight books per month. I probably could do that, but it's just not my jive. I don't like to speed through my books and I don't like to feel like I'm speeding through my books where I read something and then I put it down and then I just jump into the next book because I like to sit down and get to know the story as if I were actually in the story. I feel as if reading a book a week or so is a good amount of time to really sit down and get into the story and get to know the setting and the world and the characters. So yeah, that's why I set that three to four books, three to four books per month goal. Uh, goal number four. This is going to be a hard one. Uh, stop impulse buying books. I've been good the last few months because I put myself on a book buying ban. Going into the new year, knowing there's a lot of books that are coming out that I really want, like Wings of Ebony, like Amari and the Night Brothers, like Misfits in Love. There's so many books that are coming out that I really want. And what ends up happening is, you know, I'll go onto the Barnes and Noble website or whatever indie bookstore that I choose to order from, and I'll search for, you know, Amari and the Knight Brothers and I'll find it. And then there'll be that little bar on the side says, you might also like these. And then I'll look and I say, ooh, I do like those. Click, 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 cart. So I, my goal for this year is to stop doing that uh, because yeah, I have a lot of books and I want to sit down and actually read the books I have. Do I want to get the new books that, you know, were on my anticipated releases list? Yes. But I also want to focus on the books that I have now and not impulse buy so many books. So yeah, that's a goal that I have for myself that I'm really hoping um, I stick with. My fifth goal, my fifth goal is to read every day. And that sounds really simple and basic and you're probably like, <laughs> Ash, you're a booktuber. You don't read every day? Not always. Uh, I try to. Reading is generally something that I do for myself as, as like a self-care thing because reading is when I just 
zone out and I block out everything else that's going on in the world and around me and I can just sit and exist in this world for a little bit. And I haven't been taking the time out to do that because I've been really busy with other things. So as an act of self care, I put this on the list to make sure that I sit down and intentionally read every day to give myself that space and that time to just kind of back out of reality for a little bit, if that makes sense. Those are my five reading goals for uh, 2021. And now we're going to move on to my writing goals for 2021. My first writing goal for 2021 is to carve out time in the day slash schedule time for writing. I don't do this enough, which is why I'm not writing as much as I would like to. And because I don't carve out that time in the day and I don't sit down and have that time that is just, Ashes time to write, I end up making excuses for myself and say, well, the day got away from me. Well, I got distracted with X, Y, Z. Well, I did this. Uh, so I think if I have that time in set in the day, like, this is your designated writing time, it's going to cut down on the me giving myself the excuse of the day got away from you. You got distracted. You were busy because if I have that time in the day that is just time for me, that is what I am going to focus on. Uh, I'm usually a night writer. I feel like my best ideas come to me <laughs> at night. I used to be someone who rode on the bus or rode on the train. I can't do that anymore because COVID and I'm not taking public transportation right now. I'm usually a night writer and a lot of my best ideas come to me at night, but I'm also trying again, not to use that as an excuse and find other times during the day where I can just sit down and be intentional about my writing. Goal number two, and this is, I feel like this is something hard, particularly for new writers. And I am a very new writer. I am a very green writer. Uh, and that is to stop expecting perfection from first drafts. Uh, it's very easy to sit down and just want to pound out a first draft to expect perfection from it. But that's when you sit there and then you get stuck and you don't like a sentence and you won't allow yourself to move past said sentence until you feel like said sentence is perfect. I have to stop doing that. And I know it's something that's not going to come to me easily. I know it's something that's going to take a while to rewire the brain. So I stop expecting that level of perfection from a first draft. I, I know in my brain that first drafts are supposed to be messy and they go through edits and revisions multiple times, but I'm still kind of in that I still have to get out of that first draft perfection state. So yeah, that's my second writing goal is to stop expecting perfection from my first drafts. My third writing goal is to complete one of my two works in progress by June of 2021. I have two young adult novels that I'm currently working on. One has been shelved since about May or June. It's not something that I've completely thrown away, but it's something that for me, I needed to shelve. And then after I shelved that, I started working on another project that I'm actually really excited about. And it's the one that's taking most of my focus right now. Um, but regardless, I'd like to finish one of those uh, work in progresses by June of this year. Fourth writing goal is to participate in a Twitter pitch contest. And this is something that will probably be more towards the middle end of this year, but it's still something I'd like to, I'd like to keep in mind. Um, there's a lot of Twitter pitch contests like DV Pit, uh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Pit Mad, where authors use those as a vehicle to, uh, where authors use those as a vehicle to connect with agents um, in the hopes of having their book picked up. So that is something that I'd like to do this year. Um, so fingers crossed for me. My last goal is a little different. It still deals with writing, uh, but it involves Pinterest and I'd like to utilize Pinterest more uh, because when I have used Pinterest, it's been great for helping me organize my ideas and visualize things like settings and characters but it's something that I stepped away from doing. So it's something that I want to get back in the habit of doing because I am a very visual person and it really helps me to see things and visualize them before I start writing them. So I'd like to utilize Pinterest more to organize things like character ideas and storyboards and settings so I can have a, a pretty clear visual of what I want to see in my, in my novel. And those are my reading and writing goals for 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, what are your 2021 goals as far as reading or writing or life goes? Let me know in the comments and give a like, give a subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I will see everybody in the next video. Bye.